Welcome to this video as we look at this first section in Paul's second letter to Timothy. The sermon that I preached from this section I called Fan into Flame. If you are new to this channel and haven't yet watched my overview video for the whole of 2 Timothy, I encourage you to go and watch that video first to get a big picture of what's happening in this book. Also, if you find this helpful, then I encourage you to subscribe, uh, like this video and share it with others who might find this content useful. As always, I encourage you just to take some time to read through these few verses just a few times for yourself. Familiarize yourself with what Paul is saying to Timothy in this passage and spend some time praying that God would help you to understand his truth so that this truth would challenge you and change you and so that you'll be better equipped to teach it to others. Something that we saw in the overview video is that the big idea of 2 Timothy is that Paul is challenging Timothy to finish the work of proclaiming Christ. In 1 Timothy, we see the priority that God has that he wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And Paul wants Timothy to have that priority, to see people saved and grow in their knowledge of the truth. And so he wants Timothy to finish this work of proclaiming Christ. And we saw these themes coming through the whole book, as he says, continue in the truth as you endure suffering in view of the life to come. Now, we see these th themes in this passage. Uh, we see this idea of finishing the work. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. And we'll see in a moment that gift is the gift that Timothy had of being a preacher, as somebody who proclaims Christ to those under his care. And this other key that we see throughout the book of in view of the life to come, we see this thread pulled through the whole letter, but it starts right here in verse 1, where Paul mentions this promise of life. And we'll see how important that eternal view is in our journey through this book. It's always helpful when working through a passage like this just to look for repeated ideas. And we see uh, Paul mentions our Lord Jesus Christ a few times in this passage. He mentions God, our Father, and he mentions God, the Spirit. For the Spirit God gave us, um, I take that to be the Holy Spirit that God has given to his people, is a spirit that doesn't make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. In this middle section, we see uh, Paul telling Timothy of a few things that he remembers or recalls. And the key thing that he wants Timothy to remember is that Paul remembers his sincere faith. I think the heart of this section is found here where he says, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. Hence my title for the sermon, Fan into Flame. But very importantly, he's reminding Timothy that he doesn't need to do this work in his own strength because the spirit God gave him gives him power and love and self-discipline. God has given him everything that he needs to continue with this work. I think structurally in this passage, we've got verses 1 and 2, 3 to 5, and 6 to 7, giving us our structure. And I think the big idea that emerges from the structure is that we see that Paul is reminding Timothy of this promise of life that is coming for those who have been saved by Christ Jesus, those who have experienced God's grace and mercy, have the peace of knowing that their eternity is absolutely secure, not because of anything they've done, but all because of what Jesus has done. And so he's reminding Timothy that he has this promise of life, and it's coming for those who have a sincere faith. And Paul is just reminding Timothy in this section that he knows him really well. He knows uh, his, his grandmother and his mother. He knows that he is grounded in the faith and he is persuaded that he has faith in Jesus, the one who has saved him and secured this eternal life for him. And Paul uses this grounding of the promise of life and the sincerity of Timothy's faith uh, to encourage him and urge him to 
fan into flame the gift of God, to keep doing the task that he has been called to do. And that is the task of proclaiming Christ. For context for this uh, gift of God, you can go and read uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Uh, where we see that Paul says, until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and teaching. The gift that he is specifically talking about is the gift of uh, being a, a preacher, a teacher, the shepherd of God's flock, teaching them God's word. And he's saying, fan that into flame. Don't stop doing that. That is the thing that your people need. That is the thing your own heart needs. You need to remember this grace and mercy and peace that are yours uh, from God, through Christ Jesus, the promise of life that he's secured for you. You've trusted in him. That is absolutely secure. And so continue with the task. Fan into flame this gift of proclaiming Christ every opportunity that you get. But the wonderful thing in verse 7 is that Timothy has absolutely everything he needs to do this work. Uh, he has God's spirit the spirit who doesn't make him timid, but who gives him power, love, and self-discipline. Now, I think it's just important to note on this word timid, it's the, the Greek word, uh, delea. And, and that word has a, a very strong negative sense. Uh, it's the idea of being a coward, somebody who runs away from the battle line. And Paul is saying to Timothy, he doesn't have a spirit that makes him timid. Now, many have picked up on this and they've assumed that Timothy is somebody who's timid. So they call him Timid Timothy. But I, I think if you read about Timothy in Acts and Paul's other letters, it emerges that Timothy is actually one of Paul's soldiers that he sends into the most difficult places. So I don't think it's fair to call uh, Timothy timid. But what we're going to see as we continue through the book is that there was lots of suffering coming to God's people. And they were, the bullets were flying. And so it's understandable for them to be feeling that pressure. And Paul wants to encourage Timothy, don't give up. Yes, the pressure is mounting, but fan into flame the gift of God. Continue this work of proclaiming Christ because you have God's spirit. The spirit who doesn't make you timid. You don't need to run from the battle line. Actually, the spirit gives you power, love, and self-discipline. The power that the Spirit gives is a power to keep going, even when times are tough. And the self-discipline here uh, can also be translated as a sound mind. He's saying, Timothy, the Spirit helps you to keep your head, to be sane when everyone else is panicking. And we're going to see uh, in chapter 4, when we get there, 4 verse 5, uh, one of the commands that Paul gives is to Timothy to keep your head. Keep your head in all situations because it's going to be difficult to continue with this work. Suffering's coming, but he wants him to finish the work of proclaiming Christ. And he does that by fanning into flame the gift of God, continuing with the truth that he has, even through suffering, all in view of the life to come. And so the big thing that emerges from this passage is that the promise of life is coming. Uh, for those who have a sincere faith, so keep doing what you've been called to do, all in the power of the Spirit. Keep at this work of proclaiming Christ. Now, obviously, this is a book written to Timothy, who was the pastor of this church. But when we get to the end of the letter, we see Paul's very final uh, remarks are to uh, the church as a whole. He says, uh, grace be with you all. And so this letter was meant to be read for the whole congregation. Yes, it was ultimately uh, an encouragement, a reminder for Timothy to fan into flame the gift of God, to keep proclaiming Christ to his people. But the implications of that for the church as a whole is that they too were to continue with this work of proclaiming Christ. Uh, just a couple of other things to note in this passage. When uh, Paul says, I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did, I think who he's talking about here are his uh, Jewish forefathers. A and Paul is showing that uh, the gospel that he is preaching is the proper development of his Jewish roots. He's not moving away from the Old Testament gospel. 
Um, he is saying he is serving the God of his forefathers. Uh, the same God of the Old Testament is the God who sent Christ Jesus into the world to save sinners. And so Paul is serving God with a clear conscience. So he's pointing back to his own forefathers here. But then he also says, I'm reminded of your faith, which first lived in your forefathers, your grandmother and your mother. And he says, now I'm persuaded this faith also lives in you. And as this gospel is passed on through the generations from grandmother to mother to Timothy, the son, Paul wants it to continue to be passed on. And the thing that's going to motivate Timothy to fan this proclamation of Christ, to fan this gift of God into flame, is a reminder of the glorious promise that is there for those who have put their faith in Jesus, the one who in his grace and mercy has saved us from our sins and secured for us a glorious future. Because unless we are persuaded that the future is secured for us, uh, then we'll never be willing to suffer for the gospel. And that's what we're going to see through the rest of this book, that Paul is urging Timothy in the face of suffering to keep going, finish the work of proclaiming Christ. And you can do it in the power of the Spirit, because the Spirit gives us power, love, and self-discipline. In the passage that follows, we'll be looking more at the need to endure through the suffering that will come to all God's people. But before Paul gets there, he wants Timothy to be grounded in remembering the glorious promises that are his in Christ, uh, to remind him of his sincere faith and to say, get going. Don't stop with the work you've been called to. Finish the work of proclaiming Christ as you fan this gift of God into flame. Well, as you continue to dig into this passage, I pray that God would encourage you and stir you to continue with the work that he's called you for to continue with the work that he's called you to. God bless you.